Have you got a hair band in case you want to put your hair up? Oh, you've got your hair up. <laughs> Did you not fold anything up? Mm -mm. Why not? Mm -mm. Good morning. You'll have to excuse the dodgy hair and no makeup look. There's no point in it being anything else because this morning we are doing something a little bit different that's probably going to involve falling several times into a lake. <laughs> Uh, me and Dan, Dan and I, sorry, Dan and I and the girls are uh, going paddle boarding for the first time ever. It's something I've wanted to try for ages and I would have happily gone on my own but I said to everyone would you be interested and everyone said yes. So we are going as a family about half an hour down the road to a country park with a lake uh, to meet a lovely lady called Hayley who is going to take us out and teach us how to paddle board, stand, stand up paddle board. And I'm hoping to take you along with me. I have a GoPro, which is waterproof, and I have messaged her to ask if it's okay for me to take it on board the paddle board, and she said, absolutely. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get a bit of footage whilst we're doing it, but I might not be able to, so who knows where this vlog will end up. So I am all ready to fall into the water probably many, many times. Look at my geraniums. That's so pretty. I think I did it. You did. I'm not smiling. My legs are numb. They're numb. When you stand up, they won't be. You can sit down. I don't want to move too much. Hello, vlog. Hello, Phoebe. They feel sturdy, don't they? Yeah, I love it. I love this. They are. I could do this all day. Hello. I want my <laughs> Don't dad stop! Space out, give it some space. The wider you can make that semicircle, the tighter your turn. Okay, so if you make a long paddle, so see so your hands at the moment are like that. They get short paddle and therefore it's much more effective turn. Okay, so paddle behind you, Ali, paddle, paddle behind you, paddle behind, and then paddle behind to the nose. So paddle behind you, yes, that's it, and do a big semicircle, hold the blade in the water, hold the blade in the nose, keep it behind you, keep it behind you, paddle 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 right behind you, that's me, look at me, paddle right behind you, at the back of the board. Yeah, now do a big sweep. So here's Dan standing on his paddle board and I continue to practice my turning in a full circle. I've sped it up here. You can hear me talking to myself like a chicken. And when I turned round, Dan was just climbing back on his board having fallen in. <laughs> and I missed it. 
That occasional banging you can hear is clay pigeon shooting in the background. So here we are on our way back down and we're a bit more confident at this point. And here's Phoebe, look at her go. Honestly, the girls really picked it up. I was so proud of them. And Lilia, who started off really nervous and unsure, loved it. She really picked it up. She wants to go back. And in addition to the actual paddleboarding, we learnt about a whole new world of river etiquette. So here's a boat coming past us very slowly, and that's what they have to do. They have to slow down when going past smaller vehicles, I suppose, paddleboarders, canoers, and so on. So it was epic. <laughs> Lilia started off going, I don't like it, I'm too cold, and now what are you saying? Oh, and I come back and do it again. We got out and she said, can we go back in? It was so much fun. I even got to do like a, um, a yoga move on it. <laughs> yeah. So we went you know, touty, just and, did it anyway. And I touched a lily pad for the first time. Yeah, we were sit. We all had oh, a little I sit. I got to touch. We all had a little sit then. down while she was talking us through some things. And, and we my were hair touching is not lily pads. Yes, we, we must say the only one that fell in was, was dad. dad. Yeah, so uh, that was also a bonus. He was so cocky about anyway. it. He was like, I'm not going to fall in. You're not going to fall in. You have no core strength. <laughs> Fell backwards. Anyway, we're on the GoPro, so I imagine the sound's a bit weird. Um, so we'll catch up with you when we've got our lunch. I've got stones in my shoes. A well-earned post paddle yeah, boarding lunch. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Ten minutes in the door and everyone's back to indoor mode. Dan's on his phone. I'm listening to Phoebe's the Grand Prix. on her iPad. Lydia, well, Lydia's journaling about one of her comfort characters. Humphrey! Humphrey from Death in Paradise. And she's watching Boy Meets World. And I'm going to go and have a warm bath. And then what are we watching later, Dan? Uh, the final of the Women's European Championships, England versus Germany, 5 o'clock kickoff. Come on, the lionesses. Which is football. Yes, football. Not soccer. <laughs> <laughs> you just told me not to do that. <laughs> so I'm off to run a lovely warm bath. Not cold, but it's a nice cloudy day. There's a bit of rain in the air. Oh, there you are. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a perfect day for a bath, really. Hang on. That's better. So I'm going to run a, a bath, which I've now said about 11 billion times, and we're just going to chill out. And for dinner, I am going to make again um, the pasta al pomodoro dish that I learned to make on Skillshare. I spoke about a few vlogs ago. It's become a real family favourite. It's so easy, so tasty. So I'm going to make that a bit later. And like Dan said, we're going to be watching the, the women's football. Um, Phoebe plays for a local team now, a local girls team. So it's brilliant and something Dan said earlier was you can't, for children or for kids growing up in whatever situation they're in, you can't be it if you can't see it. So seeing um, the England, England women's football team doing so well and getting good coverage and, and people talking about it is really inspiring for, for us parents of young girls. So Phoebe's really into football. And I'm going to do a bit of sketching. I started a sketch yesterday, uh, so I'm hoping to show you a bit of that as I finish it, if I get a bit of time. But right now, I'm going to grab my iPad and go and watch a podcast in the bath. Did I mention I'm getting in the bath? <laughs>
What are we having, Dan? Oh, I shouted that really loudly. Heineken Zero. Heineken Zero. Non-alcoholic beer. Very nice. Very. Oh, it's not in focus. Very nice. Very refreshing. Yes. Low in calories and no alcohol. It's the only thing that's going to get me through the football. Nil nil at half time. How are they playing? England are playing really well. Germany are being a bit aggressive, but you know, give and take is the final. We'll see how it goes. Oh, spoken like a true pundit. <laughs> Whilst they're uh, watching the football, I am listening to my audiobook whilst I prepare dinner. I'm listening to it on Borrow Box, which is something my friend Sarah recommended to me. And it's basically library, you borrow audiobooks from your library so you need to put in all your library card details is it i'm assuming it's a uk only thing it might be across the world i don't know anyway it seems that my kent county libraries don't have a huge um, catalogue of things to choose from but i have listened to a fantastic book called big little lies by leanne moriarty that was brilliant and now I'm listening to The Wild Year by Jen Benson and it's about a family, uh, well, a mum, dad and two very, very young children who spend a whole year in Britain living in a tent. So I'm only a little bit into it, but I'm really, really enjoying it so far. I like stories like this, people trying something different. Dan and the girls are still watching the football. Well, Dan and Dan and Phoebe are. I think Lydia's concentrating more on her artwork that she's doing. And I am going to sort out this on my head. I would leave it like this, but it's just so frizzy. So I'm going to run a straightener through it. It just makes me feel hotter in my hairs like this. Like it's, I don't know, like I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> so I feel like I need to to straighten it a bit. So I'm going to do that whilst at the same time I've still got my best thing I've ever bought these. Honestly, best thing I've ever bought my AirPods. Um, I'm going to continue listening to my book whilst I do that. I've made the sauce for the dinner. So all I need to do now is add a little bit of the pasta water when I cook the pasta. I think England just scored. It was nil-nil a minute ago. I can hear cheering outside as well. <laughs> ah, anyway, and after I shake my hair, I want to share with you a realisation that I've had. Well, I'm hot now. It's quite warm today, actually. It's about 27 degrees, but it's been very cloudy and overcast, so I think it tricked me. Uh, but I feel like I'm better able to cope with higher temperatures after the searing temperatures of earlier a uh, couple of weeks ago and that's kind of what I wanted to have a very quick chat. I, I had a realisation over the past couple of weeks that um, I've sp I speak a lot on this channel about my struggle with my mood in the summer months. Um, I find um, the, the heat and the sun and so much light um, really makes me feel down. Uh, it's a sort of reverse uh, sat, well, it's seasonal affective disorder, but in the summer for different uh, brain chemical reasons. And as such, I try to find a lot of ways to enjoy summer and, you know, ways of coping in the same way I, I'm sure that people who feel this way in the winter will try to find 
ways of coping. I have a book, in fact, that's called Making Winter. Making Winter. It's by Emma Mitchell, who is uh, the author of The Wild Remedy as well. And she speaks a lot about seasonal affective disorder, which she suffers from more, and depression, which she suffers from more in the winter months. And this making winter is kind of like, can you hear my stomach gurgling? In case you don't know, I'm sure a lot of you do by now, but if you're new, I don't have a bowel. Uh, I have an internal J pouch after having my bowel removed uh, 10 years ago this month. It's my pouch anniversary. 10 year pouch anniversary at the end of August. I'll have to maybe share a bit more of my story. But anyway, I'm off on a tangent. So this is about um, using crafts and making and creativity uh, for surviving winter, basically. It's a beautiful book, actually, and I really, really enjoy it. As a winter enthusiast, um, I really enjoy it. And in that same way, I've been trying to find more and more ways to enjoy summer. And very much today, going paddleboarding was about that. Sketching is about that and taking more note of nature and the changing nature in my area and around me and being more in tune with it. And certainly having the chickens in the garden puts you more in tune with things such as the daylight because they rise and go to bed with the sunrise and the sunset and just getting more connected to it. And it's made me realize that actually, my seasonal affective disorder, which for so many years I lamented and cursed and just felt, why, why me? Why can't I just be normal? Is actually a great asset because it makes me learn and appreciate about the, learn about and appreciate nature more than I would have done if I didn't suffer from it and that is my realization it took me four minutes to get there but it was a little bit like wow I wouldn't have learned everything I've learned over the past few years if I wasn't looking for ways to survive summer and find a way out of how I feel and it just made me feel so positive and lucky and you know, proud of myself in a way that I've come this far and then realised that. And today was very much about that with the paddle boarding. I feel a very strong connection with anything to do with water. I love swimming. Um, and the idea of paddle boarding appealed to me in the back of my mind for a while. And I think it's having a bit of a, a, a time in the sun at the moment. I think a lot of people seem to be doing it. And we all just loved it. We fell in love with it. Uh, we had such a lovely experience. I'm so glad the girls enjoyed it. And there was something about being that close to the water. You are literally, it's just you and a board and then the water and it's just amazing. And the sound of it and, you know, accidentally crashing into the bank and getting a nice close look at <laughs> the foliage there. It was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. So... That's my ramble to say that actually there is a silver lining to my low mood in summer because it has made me appreciate the world more. And with that, I'm now going to go and cook pasta. Pasta also makes me appreciate the world more. Apparently we can't miss the football, so we have it on the laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the score? The final score. Two one. Good one. That's amazing. So what? What they won exactly? The European Championships. Trophy. It's Liam Williamson 
to bring it home. England, European champions. Look at your little smile. Right, are you going to grab your drink from the fridge? We've had drama. Phoebe's com been complaining of breathing difficulties. Um, and it's come to a bit of a head this morning. Anyway, we've persuaded her to give her trampolining session a go. She's booked onto a, just an hour and a half session. And I'm just walking down to the post office to post my final orders. I've closed my shop now for summer. Um, and then I'm going to come straight back and check on her but if it hasn't improved I have already spoken to our doctor but they won't give her an appointment until tomorrow morning so I may just take her to A&E to get her checked out anyway I'll keep you posted on that very boring day-to-day -day family domestic dramas <laughs> but right now I'm just going to enjoy the walk it's so sticky today Ugh. Nice houses along here, aren't they? That one's for sale. Our town centre is undergoing a regeneration and quite a few parts of it are still very run down and I always like to look up because it's an old market town and the buildings when you look up are so beautiful. I'd love to sketch all of these. Even the post office has an interesting building above it. Of course I had to stop off and get my favourite drink. No trip to the post office is complete without it. This is above a betting shop. Amazing. Always look up. Are you coming to join me? Yeah, why not? <laughs> so, Do you want to tell them what happened? What I was about? So filming stopped quite abruptly yesterday. So it's now Tuesday morning because we ended up in A&E at the local hospital. An accident and emergency because Phoebe got so breathless. Um, we couldn't really wait for our doctor's appointment tomorrow. So turns out Phoebe has asthma. But at least now we know what it is that's been causing all the problems. Um, we are off to the do doctors this morning because the A&E doctor said to keep that appointment. So you're going to go and have some breakfast. And I'm going to say that I'm going to leave the vlog here and finish off with me finishing off my sketch that I started over the last couple of days of the abandoned old car in the driveway opposite belongs to an old man who became ill and doesn't drive it anymore. The one in the bungalow opposite. So I'm gonna finish that. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna finish that sketch and I'll see you again next week. Yeah. And I think the vlog next week will be all about our invented family celebration of Him in Peño Day. Because Him in Peño is a mashup of the I'm word ginger, ginger, flamingo and jalapeno but all will be explained in the next vlog so i shall leave you with a sketch and we'll see you next time hi mia can i just keep the camera really quickly hello camera <laughs> <laughs>